So, we will now see the determination of partial molar volume. Okay. So, what is partial molar volume? Partial molar volume of a substance in a mixture is the change in volume per mole of the substance added to a large volume of the mixture. Okay. So, we have already seen what partial molar volume is. Partial molar volume V bar I is defined as dou V by dou Ni. Uh, it is the change in volume. Dou V is change in volume per mole of a substance. Uh, change in volume by the addition of 1 mole of I. Okay. Then dou V by dou Ni. Uh, at constant temperature and pressure and other components. This is known as partial molar volume. It is the um, change in volume. Dou V is change in volume. Change in volume per unit change in uh, number of moles of component I. That is change in volume per mole of the substance. Dou V by dou Ni at constant temperature, pressure and other components. We can actually uh, experimentally measure this partial molar volume. It's because visually we can measure the what is the change in volume produced by the addition of one mole of a uh, component to a solution. Okay. But we cannot measure it in the case of internal energy or Gibbs free energy or entropy. Only volume gives us the uh, facility to be uh, to measure the change in volume produced by the addition of one mole of a component. Okay. So, how do we determine partial molar volume? There are two methods for determining partial molar volume. One is the direct method and the other is the method of intercepts. The direct method is quite similar. So, let's see what direct method is. We have a mixture containing two components, one and two. Okay. So, we have a solution in which there are two components, component one and component two. Two. First, we are keeping the concentration of component 2 a constant. Okay. And we are adding 1 to this solution. Uh, we are adding more amount of 1 to the solution so that we can measure the change in volume. Okay. So, um, we are keeping 2 a constant. 2 is kept constant. And adding 1. Suppose uh, uh, on first addition. What is first addition? We are first, first addition. We are adding 1 mole of 1. And measuring the mole, uh, volume as V1. In, on, in second addition, we are adding 2 moles. That, that means I am adding 1 more mole of 1. And let the volume be V2 and so on and suppose we have measured till Vn. Now we are going to plot a graph between the volume of the solution by the addition of various number of component 1. Various amounts of component 1. Okay. Suppose we are getting a straight line. Whatever graph we get, if we take the slope of that graph at a particular composition, then that will give you, this is dv and this is dn, dn1. Okay, what is slope? dy by dx. In this case, dy is dv and dx is dn1. And hence, the slope will give you dv by dn at constant temperature, pressure and number of moles of second component and that is the partial molar volume, partial molar volume of 1. Okay. In the second experiment, we will keep 1 a constant and we will keep on adding 2. The same procedure will be followed and the uh, slope of the graph will give you V bar 2. This is the direct method for the determination of partial molar volume. Now, let us see the intercept method or the method of intercepts intercept method 
okay this involves a lot of calculations and let's see what these calculations are okay uh, to start with let vm be the total volume of the solution containing one mole of two components that is we have a solution containing two components we have a solution containing two components one and two containing two components one and two let the total volume be total volume containing one mole each of one and two be vm okay that means vm is equal to v by n1 plus n2 vm contain one mole each of one and two so vm is uh, volume of solution containing n1 moles of one and n2 moles of two okay so vm is v by n1 plus n2 okay so from this what is v cross multiply v is n1 plus n2 into vm okay v is cross multiplying we get v is equal to n1 plus n2 into vm what are we trying to find we are going to find do v by do do v by do n1 at constant n2 and that is equal to v bar 1 so how do we find v bar 1 we have to differentiate this equation differentiating sorry differentiating we will get do by do n1 of n1 plus n2 into vm at constant number of moles of component 2 so let's differentiate this is product so we have to apply the product uh, rule first function is n1 plus n2 into differential of the second do vm by do n1 plus second function is vm into do do by do n1 of n1 plus n2 n2 is constant therefore do n1 by do n n1 is 1 so what we have left is v bar 1 is equal to n1 plus n2 into do vm by do n1 plus vm let this be equation 1 okay suppose vm what is vm vm is the volume of solution containing one mole of two components okay one mole each of two components therefore this is a function of the mole fraction okay volume is a function of mole fraction Num uh, as number of moles changes the volume will also change this mole fraction can be of one or two let's take it as two vm is a function of mole fraction x2 uh, it can be mole fraction of x1 also but we are considering it as a uh, function of x2 okay from this since volume is a state function we can write dv is equal to suppose we have a uh, function x as a function of x of uh, function of x um, t and p we usually write d dx is equal to do x by do t at constant pressure into dt plus do x by do p at constant temperature into dp is it not that's how we write for state function the only difference here is that this there is only one dependent variable okay in that case we can write do vm is equal to do vm by do x2 do vm by do x2 into d x2 there is no second variable hence we don't have to keep anything constant or add another term so we have dvm is equal to do vm by do x2 into d x2 dividing this equation dividing this equation by 
d n1 we can we get do vm by uh, sorry d vm by d n1 is equal to do vm by do x2 into dx2 by d n1 okay uh, we have only divided the whole equation by dn1 so we have dn1 here in the denominator and also here in the denominator we have dn1 on both sides of the equation we have n1 okay so what is x2 x2 is small fraction of 2 and x2 is written as n2 by n1 plus n2 okay uh, now let's let's put this equation as 2 and this equation as 3 okay so differentiating 3 with respect to n1 why do we need that because here we have dou x2 by dou n1 so in order to get dou x2 by dou n1 we have to uh, write the expression for x2 and then differentiate it, it with respect to n1 that is dx2 by dn1 at constant number of moles of 2 will be equal to dou by dou n1 now this is partial differential because we have two variables uh, d dou by dou n1 of n2 by n1 plus n2 here we have to see that n2 is a constant and hence it can be taken outside and the only variable is n1 this is n2 into dou by dou n1 of 1 by n1 plus n2 at constant n2. Okay. So, what is d by dx of 1 by x? That is minus 1, minus 1 by x square. Similar is the case here. Do by do n1 of 1 by n1 plus n2 does not count. But uh, in uh, when we write the function we have to write it as n1 plus n2 here x is n1 plus n2 so what do we get n2 into this is minus 1 divided by n1 plus n2 the whole square so we can write it as dx2 by dn1 at constant n2 is equal to is equal to minus of n2 by n1 plus n2 the whole square. Okay. Let this be equation number 4. Why do we have an equation 4? Because in, uh, in equation 2 we have dx2 by dn1. So, we have to use using um, dx2 by dn1 at constant n2 is here dx2 by dn1. Okay. So, before that we have x2 is equal to n2 by n1 plus n2. Here also we have this can be again written as before we write, I write it. I will write it as minus n2 by n1 plus n2 into 1 by n1 plus n2. Okay. Let this be equation 4. Now 3 is x2 is equal to n2 by n1 plus n2. Therefore, we can write using 3 in 4. What is 3? 3 is n2 by n1 plus n2. Here we all, here also we have n2 by n1 plus n2. Here also we have n2 by n1 plus n2. So, this is dx2 by dn2, dn1 at constant n2 is equal to. This is 
minus 